Hey, Ray Dalvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and I'm going to talk about every tool and piece of software that I use to design and manage websites for both myself and for clients. I broke them up into a couple categories, domains and hosting, the website framework that you pick, layout and design, ways to add functions, pictures and graphics, file management, and also communication. So we'll start here with domains and hosting, and I recommend three companies. HostGator is the most affordable, and that's why I think it's the best for beginners to start. I picked them probably 10 or 11 years ago. I still use them to this day, even though I have a couple of my sites hosted elsewhere. I like to get experience with various hosts, and I, I started using GoDaddy for domains, and I separate my domains from my hosting. When you register hosting, you're going to pick between basic hosting, shared hosting, or an upgraded hosting package like VPS, dedicated, or reseller. So you really just want to choose whether or not you want to have one package for one website, or you want to get a package that allows you to create unlimited domains and websites. My other two recommended hosting companies are Bluehost. They're recommended by WordPress, and WordPress, we're going to dig into that a little bit later into this video. They're a little bit more expensive. They're actually running a sale right now, and you can see it's $2.95 a month. I think the regular price is $3.95 a month for that initial term, and they renew here at $8.99 a month. All of these companies, they're going to give you a special when you first sign up, and then you're going to have to renew at a higher rate. The thing I like about HostGator is... They're the most affordable at $275 a month, and I'm pretty sure this is their regular rate, and they even run specials a couple of times a year to get even lower than that. And the last hosting company that I moved a lot of my websites over to is SiteGround. I got their Grow Big package here to do unlimited websites, so I moved a handful of my client websites over to them. I still have a couple on HostGator. They have a little bit better technology than the other two. HostGator and Bluehost are a little more basic. SiteGround gives you more performance and a few extra tools that are specific to WordPress. So I highly recommend that you pick from one of these three to start with. And what I found from client work is sometimes they get set up on their own. They might have their own domain in their hosting, but they don't know how to manage the website. So I think it's good to get experience with a handful of hosting companies. If you're just getting started, don't overthink this decision. I'll include a link here in the top right to a video where I go more in depth on these hosting options. And if you want to get started right now, I'll include links that you can use to go and set up your web hosting from each of these companies in the description below. Now, one thing that I like to use for any hosting company is FTP. That just stands for File Transfer Protocol. And the program that I use for this is called FileZilla. This works across Windows and Mac. When you set up hosting, you'll have your host name, your username, and your password. You can put that in here, and it's going to connect you to your web server. So instead of going through the built-in file manager through your web hosting company, you can drag and drop files from your computer, which that's the left side here. And once you connect to a web server, you can just drag them over and transfer them. This is especially useful if you are editing the WordPress template files, if you're doing raw code and you just want to drag and drop code files from your computer to your web server, or if you don't want to necessarily overwrite anything, but you just want to get a look into your web server to see what the file structure looks like for whatever framework that you choose, which we'll discuss in the next step. I put together a full tutorial on how to use FileZilla for WordPress. I'll link that up here in the top right. Next step is choosing the framework that you're going to use for web design. If you watched any of my videos, you know that I advocate for WordPress. I think it's the most flexible option. And WordPress is decentralized, meaning that you can just download the WordPress software. It's open source. You have to get your own hosting. But once you do that, you can install WordPress across any hosting company. Now, there are other options out there. You know, Squarespace, I'm sure everyone's heard of that. They do advertising, whereas WordPress, I don't think they've ever run paid advertisements, especially TV and that kind of thing. Now, Squarespace and these other companies, they bundle hosting with the website framework. You have to pay for Squarespace's monthly package, which is going to be a little bit higher priced than what you would do if you had WordPress plus your own hosting. Another big platform that's getting popular nowadays is called Webflow. I've never used this, but just from screenshots of the design software, it almost looks exactly like Photoshop, but for websites. So you design in an editor window, kind of like Photoshop, and then you export, which turns your design into code. I'd say Webflow is probably better for people that are graphic designers. And the last option, which I think is kind of like WordPress, but only for e-commerce, that's Shopify. If you see anybody selling physical products, chances are they're using Shopify. 
Now you can do e-commerce on WordPress and Squarespace and these other platforms, but Shopify is completely geared towards e-commerce. So it's less of a do-it-all solution. So I think that these are probably the main four platforms that you're gonna wanna choose if you plan on offering web design as a service. You can get to know them all, but I think it's good to master one of them. Now let's say you're a web developer and you wanna do everything from scratch with code. I got started with just HTML, CSS, and PHP, and I eventually converted it over to WordPress because I realized it was easier to manage a website through WordPress than doing raw code. But I still like to customize every now and then. My favorite program to do that is Notepad++, which I have open here. The thing I like about this is it supports a lot of code languages. Right now I have just a, a snippet of JavaScript code, but you can see how it styles it. So you have your comment here, which is green. Integer values here are, are orange. Define words like function, var, which sets a variable, they're in blue. It just makes it really easy to visualize the code that you're writing. Now, if you want to take it a level above this, you might use services like GitHub or an integrated development environment, some type of code editor that gives you more features than just Notepad++. After you choose a framework, you're going to want to think about the layout and the design. And chances are you're probably not going to want to start from scratch. Thankfully, each of these services gives you options to install a template with WordPress. They're called themes. You can browse themes here from the theme directory, and they have a combination of free themes or paid themes. Usually the paid themes are going to be a little nicer looking. They give you support, and they might have more options built in. The one that I recommend is called Divi. The nice thing about Divi is that it gives you drag and drop visual editing ability. So in a way, it kind of mimics what you might see with something like Webflow, where you are designing visually. I put together an entire tutorial on how to use Divi. I'll link that up here in the top right. I built a site from scratch with it. You can see all of the features that are built into it. And if you'd like to learn more, I'll put a link in the description below. You can see here that Divi is the most popular WordPress theme on the market today. It's got over 17,000 reviews on Trustpilot. And another popular option that is similar to Divi is called Elementor. I've seen YouTube ads for both Divi and Elementor, so chances are that you've heard of those if you have worked with WordPress. You can figure out what theme works best for you or your clients. With these other services, Squarespace, you got templates. You can pick here from different industries and they'll show you some templates that are available. Same thing with Webflow, they have templates. It looks like that they sell these. So we have a couple here that are $49, $24, $34. On Shopify, they're called themes like WordPress. So whatever platform you're using, if you're not using one of these main four, just look to see if they have themes or templates available that you can start with. The one commonality between all these is that they end up with HTML and CSS. I'm guessing that all these services, I know WordPress, they let you customize with CSS if you wanna add that to your website and do anything manually. I like to use Chrome Inspector to dig into the raw code, and if I need to customize something, you can learn CSS and figure out how to do that. I put together a tutorial showing you how to get into CSS with WordPress. I'll link that up here in the top right. It's a great thing to learn, but it's not necessary because the themes that are available make either visual editing a lot easier, or they just have the design built into it where you don't have to do much more than drop in your content. Once you got the design in place, you're probably going to want to add some features to it that might not be built into the theme or template options. So all of these services have similar features. With WordPress, they're called plugins. They let you do things that are not built into WordPress directly or built into your theme. They also let you integrate with third-party services. These are some of the featured plugins here. And if I go to the popular ones, let me go down here. This is gonna show you the most popular plugins on WordPress. So one is a contact form. Um, Yoast SEO is another big one. If you've installed any client websites where you wanna get traffic on Google, you probably have this installed. Here's the Elementor plugin, which lets you do that drag and drop editing ability without having that as your theme. And WooCommerce, this is how you add e-commerce to your website. So as they show on this page, there's 58,000 free plugins available. And just like with themes, there's paid ones that give you better functionality. We go over to Squarespace. They call these extensions. Here's a couple right here. The one is MailChimp for commerce. MailChimp is an email marketing platform, which I'll discuss in just a few minutes here. Similar to the Squarespace extensions, you have integrations with Webflow. Now, I don't think Webflow has this built-in like pre-made tools. 
I think what they do is just show you tutorials on how to integrate with these services. Because if I click on MailChimp over here, you can see that they link you to a lesson, not a, an extension that you can download or a plugin that you can install. If you go over to Shopify, they call these apps. So the apps on the App Store are going to be much more geared towards e-commerce, like loyalty rewards here. You got fulfillment, ones for shipping, um, an add to cart button, upsells. So if you want to stick with e-commerce, this is why I think Shopify is the best option because everything they do is geared towards selling products. And this is why in so many of my videos related to web design freelancing, I recommend sticking with one niche, whether it's e-commerce stores, whether it's local service companies, restaurants, the way that you build a website for each of these niches is going to be different. And if you're constantly jumping around, you're going to spend a lot of time learning. There's going to be a lot of overhead of you just figuring out how to do things instead of reusing what you already know and building on what you've already done. When you're putting a web design together, you're obviously going to have to edit some pictures and graphics. And I've always been an Adobe user, so I subscribe to Adobe's Creative Cloud package, which costs like 55 bucks a month. And that gives you access to every one of their services. So the two that I use most often are Photoshop and Illustrator. If I need to resize photos, I use a tool here called the Image Processor. And that just runs through a batch of photos to resize them so they're web ready. But the beautiful thing about the world nowadays is you can usually do a lot for free or use online services. So the one that is most popular nowadays is Canva. I know they have templates, so in a way, they kind of give you a better starting point than what you would have with Photoshop. You can see here they, they have templates for presentation, social media, print products, marketing. Then when it comes to photos, you know, when I first got started, free stock photos weren't a thing. Nowadays, there's sites like this, pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S. Another one is unsplash.com. You can do a search here for kitchen and you'll get a ton of kitchen photos. These are super high quality. So most of them are like 6,000 pixels wide. So you're definitely going to want to resize them before you upload them. If the web design service that you use doesn't do that automatically. And the last one that I use very often is called Icon Finder. If I just want to add a little you know, graphic to a widget area or something where I don't need a full photo, you can go into here. They have premium ones that you can buy or you can filter by free and then the license option so you know for commercial use no link back see what you got here and you can download these in multiple formats you have the different sizes here from 48 pixels all the way up to 4000 pixels or png svg which is a scalable vector file anytime i need any types of graphics these are the services that i use and i use the adobe software to edit it if necessary the final tools that i want to touch on are for files and communication so I keep this really simple. For any spreadsheets and documents, I use Google Drive. I stopped using Microsoft products a long time ago. I still have it on my computer just in case I need to open one. For the most part, I just upload it to my Google Drive and let that convert it to the Google Drive files. I organize everything within folders here. I got spreadsheets to track a lot of the important information in my business and in my life. Anything that is not a spreadsheet or a document, I just keep on my computer on my Dropbox folder. I got a hierarchy within there where everything is synced between all of the computers that I have Dropbox installed on. You can get started for free with Dropbox and get two gigabytes of space. I subscribe to this plus package, which is roughly 120 bucks a year. They give you two terabytes of space and I'm using a fraction of that. So I don't think I'm ever gonna need to upgrade from this. I don't use project management software for this reason. I manage everything through these two services. And then when it comes to communication, my favorite tool by far is Grammarly. Right now I'm logged in and I'm using the Grammarly editor within the web. They also have a program that you can download or this integrates with Google Chrome for text areas if you're writing within WordPress. And it also has an extension for Microsoft if you're using Microsoft Word and wanna write within there but they go through and make sure that your writing is clear and concise. You, they give you fixes here, so you can see they want me to add a comma to that. They give you alerts on correctness, clarity, engagement, delivery. They give you a score, which really all I'm trying to do is get to like a 95 plus, and if I do that, I'm pretty happy with it. It's funny because growing up, I really didn't like writing at all, and now I'm writing blog posts. I'm, I'm prepping for these YouTube videos by jotting down bullet points or notes, and then with 
email marketing. I use MailChimp, so I'm writing emails to my list. I recommend MailChimp because it's free up to 2,000 subscribers. You can see here I'm showing the calendar of the campaigns that I've sent out in the last month. Email marketing is just a great way to stay in touch with your customers, whether you're running a blog yourself or you're managing a client's website. Pretty much every successful online business has an email list. MailChimp is the platform that I selected many years ago and I've been happy with them. There's tons of other services that you can use for email marketing like ConvertKit. I think MailerLite is a popular one that's a little less expensive. But those are pretty much all of the important tools that I use for my web design business. Now, if you want to download a giveaway, just a one-page PDF that has a bunch of the tools that we went through today, along with a couple others that I didn't mention, which go into the business and the ongoing management side of things, head to my homepage, WebsiteProfitCourse.com. You can download that free giveaway, and I'll include a link to that in the description below. Last but not least, if you learned a thing or two, maybe uncovered a tool that you didn't know about, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more web design freelancing videos and WordPress tutorials. I linked up a bunch of them throughout this video that go more in depth on some of these tools. And by all means, if you got a tool that you love for web design, leave it in the comments below. I'm always interested in hearing new ones. It always fascinates me when somebody shows a tool that looks completely awesome that I've never heard of before. I am a creature of habit, so once I figure out something that I like, I usually stick with it. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this entire video, and I hope you join me in the next one.